Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I am your host, Crystal Crawford, and welcome to another week and another conversation that I'm very hopeful will begin to give you some of the change that you've been asking for. If you don't know me that well, I'm an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator, and uh, these tools have completely transformed my life, my money, every single way that I am in the world. And so I am like honored to spend my life just talking more about them and spreading them in the world. And today, I call today's show, Does Your World Include Theirs? Because another body of work in Access Consciousness is called Talk to the Entities. And this body of work has transformed my life in ways I can't hardly express, and yet you know I'm going to keep trying. So does your world include theirs? That's going to be today's conversational topic. Now, I received last week about 100 different questions about entities because I got this great idea to do an impromptu book club and I was going to do it in my group on Facebook and then it turns out I did it all wrong and so I didn't end up doing a book club. But just so you guys know, if this topic of entities is brand new to you or it's pinging you and you don't know why, or you know you know something about ghosts and yet you haven't done much with it, there's a couple of things you can check out right away and then I'm gonna dive into some of your questions. Hi Rita, hi Christy, hi Alexandra, Dominique, Christine, hello. The Talk to the Entities book is incredible. And in fact, I have it open on my Kindle right next to me and I'm gonna pull a few little bits out of it in today's conversation. So that's an incredibly cost-effective resource that you can start using right away. Number two, there are Talk to the Entities classes, and I have one coming up as of the recording of this show um, on Friday. So if you have been asking for a class with me, that's happening as well. And so you can go to accessconsciousness.com slash Crystal Crawford to find out more about that. Beyond that, there's very, very basic entity tools and precepts that you can start to use to change everything in your life right now. And I want to go through them very quickly and then I want to get into your questions. The first thing you got to know about all the spirit world is that it exists. It's there. It's very similar to like the microfungal world that's underneath all of our feet in the soil everywhere. Uh, I know I, I named that wrong, but there's this whole like organism underneath the soil when soil is healthy that has is connected in every single way that we never acknowledge, but it's there. There's a whole bacterial world. There's a whole virus world. It's like the first thing you got to get about the entity and spirit world is that it exists. That's pivotal to what's next because then you have to actually empower yourself with the tools to handle it. Now, hand in hand with handling it is getting that you cannot shut off awareness. And a lot of what we call other things is entity awareness. And so there's different things that you can choose to handle it. You can clear the spirits, you can communicate with them, you can receive from them, and you can cooperate with them. And that's really what we can start to get into in the in the, the three-day class or the eight-part telecall series that we're getting into on Friday. Now, this is not that video. So if you need basic entity tools, I would recommend you go to crystaljoycrawford.com slash confused truths and go grab that opt-in. And there's five different lives in there that'll give you some of those tools. So but what I want to cover today is a lot of the questions that you guys asked when you joined my Facebook group that, but I want to talk about them from the point of view of like, is your world including theirs when you ask this? So let me, let me play with this and you'll see where I'm going with this. One of the persons who joined the group, her question was, which wasn't really a question, was this, to receive communion with entities with ease. Now, Communion. If somebody's wanting like communion with entities, what is it they're actually, what is it they actually want? And what is communion and, and what does that mean and how can we use it? So I went into the dictionary to look up communion because I was like, how is that word defined actually? Here's the definition of communion. The sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts and feelings, especially when the exchange is on a mental or spiritual level. The sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts and feelings, especially when the exchange is on a mental or spiritual level. That's what communion means according to this dictionary. Now, what I would add to that is communion is the immediate gifting and receiving that occurs when you are being with 
something. So like, for example, when you go outside um, and you, you can go outside and have all manner of experiences. I've gone outside the house before and been totally in my head and not noticed anything about the earth. I've other, other times gone outside and experienced everything about the earth, the smell, the fragrance, the, the feeling of the wind on my skin, the feel of the earth underneath my feet, the, the glory and glorious, you know, new leaves that are coming, et cetera. It's, there's so much to actually receive when you do, but you can, two people or two yous can walk outside and have a totally different experience based on whether or not they're actually communing with what's going on. So the same is true of the spirit world. To, to be with is to receive everything with no point of view and allow all of those energies to contribute to you in the way that they do. So her statement, which was to receive communion with entities with ease is a little bit of a, of a, um, a double ask to receive communion. You can either be in communion with something or you're not in communion with something. And when you're not in communion with something, which most of us aren't, that's when everything gets hard. Now, this is this can seem very theoretical and like because communion doesn't have any solidity to it, right? Like thoughts and feelings and emotions and feeling things and having problems and stress and worry and all that other stuff that we do is solid and dense and feels real. And everyone else out there is going to validate that it's real, right? But communion with the earth or communion with the spirit world is not solid. It's just generative. And on top of that, we have not learned how to be sensitive to what it is we're aware of. We haven't even really been taught to be sensitive to the earth, right? So you could kind of both of those entities, spirit world and earth are pretty much kind of in the same category in that regard. However, with the earth, there's things we can see. So it's almost as if we've, yeah, I can see how it might seem easier to commune with the earth because there's things you can visually see, but truly like receiving from and being with the earth is very different than seeing the earth. And the same is true of the spirit world, being with everything that you perceive and developing sensitivity to that is a muscle and something you have to learn how to do because it's, I didn't go to entity school 101, did you? So, if, if, if you get that you're aware of entities and what you want to have is like more receiving, then you've got to cultivate that muscle and that choice for being with, for communion. Okay. We definitely go into that more in the class. Here's another question. What are some tools to co-create more with entities versus being in resistance or maybe receive more? Cool. Cool. The first thing that I would look at with this is we, I noticed that a lot of people tend to view the spirit world with the energy of give and take. So I'll give this, I'll take this and you give this and then I'll, you take this and I'll give this. It's this very, very linear thing that we do with like, what can I do to co? I, so I guess the first thing I would look at with this is like, what do you mean by co-create? When I look at the energy underneath it, though, you know, there's this underlying question of like, how do I include them more? Does your world include entities? Or doesn't it? And if you have an ability with entities, and you can, again, go to crystaljoycrawford.com slash confused truths if you need more on that. But if you have an ability with entities and you're not including them, what occurs is this gigantic backlog of energy. And so that gigantic backlog of energy shows up as headaches and fatigue and moods and all kinds of things that you would normally just write off to that stuff instead of going, I'm just aware. And what am I aware of? So, so what are some tools to co-create more with entities versus being in resistance? I would acknowledge first that they exist and that they're everywhere and similar to co-creating with the earth, is that any different than actually being with or receiving from? So, and, and I'm getting, even as I'm talking about this, like the totally different reality that this is, you, you cannot look at or choose 
a reality that includes entities and keep your life the same. You cannot function in your life in the same way. You cannot try to apply the different things that you do in relationships with people to the spirit world because it doesn't function in the same way. So because the spirit world is energy, you've got to learn now and strengthen functioning as energy. And I think that's the most massive gift of anything I've ever heard about because like the more you're willing to function as energy, everything gets easier and greater. Money gets easier and greater. Relationships get easier and greater. Choice and change get easier and greater. So what a gift. Um, so it's like, what would change in your whole life if you were willing to receive more? So let's extrapolate this for a second, because this is what I love about the entities class. If you were willing to receive more in regards to money, would you have more money? Yes or no? If you were willing to receive more with entities, would you have more money? Yes or no? So this, I heard Gary say in the foundation class this last weekend, he's like, you guys keep talking about these areas of your life where you don't receive. He's like, but if you're not receiving here, you're not receiving over here. Like it's across the board. So it's not that we don't receive in particular areas. Like you, if you don't receive with entities, but you can receive with money, it's like, no. If you're not receiving with entities, then you're not receiving with money and all across the board. You're not receiving you, you're not receiving what's possible, right? So that's what I think is so fucking amazing about these little special, little, these specialty topics and these incredible, incredibly diverse worlds called the specialty classes in access because the more you're willing to explore these worlds, the more you start to get more access to you across the board. So it's like co-creating with entities. First of all, what do you mean by that? Second of all, do you allow yourself to ask and receive from anything in the universe? Or do you try to do, 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 do your life? And is that why it's so hard? So it's like you can ask and receive from every element in the universe, including entities. Is that something you practice? Is that something you choose? Is that something you remember on a day-to-day -day basis? So it's like if your world included theirs, if you got on a regular moment-by-moment -moment basis that you know your world includes all beings, how much richer would it be? How much more access would you have to all the wealth and all the knowledge in the universe? Like what else is possible that you haven't even considered that you could ask for and receive? But that reality is not the give and take reality where you're like, hey, what can you do for me? <laughs> Which is what I see a lot of people asking. It's like, well, what can entities do for me? I'm like, fucking nothing with that attitude. You know, like I wouldn't do shit for you if you asked me, you know? But um, so you got to look at where you're functioning from because that's going to be what's showing up in your life. But that's what I got to say about that one. Okay. Miss Malini Rustagi said how to feel their presence and know who they are. Now, if you dive into the Talk to the Entities book by Shannon, you will have such, you will get out of it what you get out of it. But in the back of that book, there's a transcript of a class that she did. And um, one of the phrases that she uses quite a bit in that transcript is developing sensitivity. You've got to develop your sensitivity. And I think this is so brilliant, uh, the way that Shannon talks about things, you know, like you've got to learn this, you've got to develop this, you've got to practice this, is comes out of her mouth a lot because it's true. And, um, you know, like <laughs> the person I am now and the sensitivity that I have now to all different kinds of awareness. And what I had when I first started with access consciousness is like light years. So to say that I've developed sensitivity is very, very accurate. And I've developed it through a lot of different access consciousness tools, through body work, through questions, through just practicing in my day to day, um, you know, through relentlessly using the tools and the clearing loops and, you know, all the different, all the different things in access. But you do have to develop your sensitivity. And 
she takes you through in this book, and we go through a lot of exercises in the eight part telecall series that we're about to do on Friday. We go through exercises to assist you in that process. And it, it will assist, it, and it will give you like exercises that you can do on a daily basis. And it will not replace the need to show up every day and cultivate that sensitivity even more. It's very much like learning a language. I can download the app and purchase the subscription and practice once in a while, but until I'm really, really steeped in the language and committed to you know, it becoming one of my go-tos, that language is always gonna kind of be a hobby and I'll only ever know a few words, right? So it's very, very the same in the language and the university of energy. You have to continually practice, be in the practice of developing more sensitivity. So, you know, how to feel their presence and know who they are. You can start to ask, you know, the entities that are around you to get closer to you if they want to contribute and to give you a sensation that you cannot miss as one step in that direction. And to know who they are, start to ask, like, hey, who are you? Are you a, a woman or a man? Um, you know, are you related to me or not related to me? Do, have I ever known you or do I not know you? Or do you know somebody I know? You start to ask some questions and, and get some more detailed information and find out how entity communication actually works for you. Because it's not weird and it's not wrong and it's not bad, but it is different for all of us. And some people can hear voices and other people don't, and I definitely don't. And then sometimes some words are more clear than others, but they still come through in, in a big download. And so, you know, it's different for all of us. So you gotta go discovering what it is for you, okay? Uh, let's see, with, so this is Christy Trefiak. She said, with entities or demons that have ill intent and are manipulating or causing harm to its host, what is the clearest way to remove them and their consciousness programming imprinting in and around the host? Okay, it doesn't matter who or what kind of entity you have come in contact with. And it just doesn't matter. It's very similar to, it, it's actually not just similar to people, it's the same with people. It doesn't matter what kind of person you come in contact with. The thing you have to remember in order to change anything is that you are the dominant entity. Now, if you're not willing to be the dominant entity in your life, you're definitely, that's transferring over to your unwillingness to be the dominant entity with the spirit world. It's changeable though. And it's literally just recognizing that I just give my power away to the other people or the other entities in the room. And I just don't, I'm not unwilling to dominate. One of the tools though that I use to outcreate this, I just don't deal with this anymore. I'm willing to dominate just about everybody, <laughs> including me, um, is what energy, space and consciousness can me and my body be to be the dominant entity I refuse to be for all eternity. And then you run the clearing statement, everything that doesn't allow it, I destroy and uncreate it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So I would just watch the significance that you put on ill intent, entities or demons that have ill intent. It's like, have you made that energy more significant? And does the significance allow you or does the significance empower you? Because what we do with significance is we disempower ourselves. We go into this trauma and drama around how significant it is that this guy's an asshole or that entity's an asshole. And so relieve ourselves of all ability to act. And if that's how you like to live, then keep doing that. But if it would be easier to actually be you and be the power that you are, you got to look at a different choice. So um, here's another piece of this. She goes, when entities or demons that, uh, with it, with entities or demons that have ill intent and are manipulating or causing harm to its host, let me address that. The only person that can be manipulated or harmed is the person that wants to be manipulated or harmed. Now, you may have had periods of your life where you were totally unconscious about that and did not even know that you could choose something else or you know, none of that was conscious, right? I definitely had a lot of my life where I had no idea that being hurt or feeling betrayed was a choice I was making to control other people. 
but then I got the information and then I started looking at what I was choosing and I started making some different choices. So you got to know that whoever is being hurt, if they're still choosing that, that works for them. So here's another huge tip for all of you guys that have spirit awareness or you have relatives that have spirits and demons. You know, you got to get that people choose what they choose because they choose it. So you also can't help anybody. Help is a superior point of view. Don't do it. You can contribute and you can be aware. So that's another thing. I think that's important to get that. What is the clearest way to remove them and their consciousness programming imprinting in and around the host? Okay. There's two types of clearings, guys. This is so simple. And it's actually so easy that I that some people don't believe it works, but it just does. There's an entity clearing. And in the class, I will go into much more detail about this, what it is, all the different nuances of it, like the different ways that you can use it. But for this video, let me give it to you here. When you're aware that there are spirits that want to be cleared, or even if you don't know if they want to be cleared and you just want to create a change just to see what happens, here's what you do. Truth, who are you? Truth, who were you before that? Truth, who were you before that? Truth, who were you before that? Truth, what is your job? Truth, what's your job before that? Truth, what was your job before that? Truth, what was your job before that? Truth, what was your job before that? Truth, who will you be in the future? Please take all your magnetic imprinting and you can go now. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. And for demons, it goes like this. Go back to from whence you came, never to return to me, my body, or this reality. Go back to from whence you came, never to return to me, my body, or this reality. Go back to from whence you came, never to return to me, my body, or this reality again. Until you feel the energy change. And those two things work for 80 to 90% of entity and demon activity. Now, when something doesn't clear... The person's holding on to it. Entities and demons don't hold on to you. You hold on to them. So number two, you can clear them from other people. And if that other person wants them back, they'll be back. Okay. And three, it's that simple. It will, however, not be that simple if someone's holding on to it or you've made it significant in any way. Okay. So that's key to all of this stuff is really like watch for the moments where you're making this super significant and like, cause that's really what we've learned from Hollywood, from religion. Um, I, I think I've told you guys, I grew up in this, I grew up in a different religion altogether, but in my twenties, I was a part of this. Uh, I think I have apple in my teeth. Um, you needed to know that. I uh, was a part of this huge charismatic church and we would spend evening services, hours, binding and loosing, binding the devil and loosing angels on the earth. Like, and I don't even know, we just had to do enough and raise enough frenzy that it would actually work. So it was like hours and hours and hours and I was always tired after. And, and they were called prayer warriors because they went after these demons with their prayer and Anyway, it's just super easy to clear them. So just don't do significance. It won't it won't help you at all. Jenny Nala wants to know, can I co-create with them? I think I kind of talked about that. Um, Randa Ray asked, how can they contribute? And Felice asked, what is an entity? And I probably should have addressed that at the beginning of this video, but who goes in order anymore? Not me. Um, an entity is just a disembodied being. And there's all kinds. The entity world is as diverse as the natural world. It's another part of the natural world that never gets acknowledged or talked about. So, you know, and also like a song is an entity and a book is an entity and your business is an entity and et cetera. So it's just a disembodied being. That's all it is. Okay. How can they contribute? I wonder. It's like when you look at all the different ways that everything in our life contributes, that's when you start to get a different sense of the diversity of contribution that's actually available to you. For example, everything in my office right now is contributing in some way. Some of it is contributing a sense of mess, not as much. I've been really tidying and cleaning lately. Most of it is contributing a very a sense of well-being, um, richness. Like my desk is this gorgeous slab of wood that I just love. Um, you know, I've got this beautiful wall that I look at. I look out onto a view. All of that's contributing. And then there's all the beings that are in the room with me. And that's all contributing. 
Um, then there's the earth that I get to both see, but also perceive, and that's contributing, um, et cetera. Like I could go on and just spend the, the rest of the, the, the show talking about that. But where we cut ourselves off from that is we don't actually notice, period. We don't notice. We don't take the time or even put our attention on the contribution that everything is. We're so busy and wrapped up in all of our problems that are invented. Um, so how can they contribute? Oh my goodness. What else is possible that you haven't considered? What does it be like to be nurtured and enlivened and you know, nourished by everything that you can't see but you can perceive? And everything that doesn't allow that to show up, will you destroy it and create it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. My goodness, there's so many questions. What are your office hours like? Somebody asked. Do you have a specific routine or do you see who shows up? I do not have a specific routine with office hours, but I encourage everybody that takes a, a Talk to the Entities class to establish a, a routine for at least a couple weeks. Because most of us, when we first come in contact with these beings, have a backlog. And a backlog is very similar to when you have a dam, you know, like a, you dam up a river and it does, the water all backs up and it forms this lake and whatever. Um, when you remove the dam, the backlog that is the lake comes rushing down and like, you know, there's a lot of shit going on. So a lot of us have eons of backlog and it's not significant. It's just a lot of energy and a lot of information. So having a regular daily, at least for two weeks, is so helpful in addressing and handling all of the awareness that you've had all this time that you haven't necessarily addressed and handled. So my office hours are throughout my day. I'm just always aware that stuff is going on all the time. And I just handle it. I am with it. So, so that's how it works for me right now. And I wonder what would change in your world or what your world requires to handle what's going on for you. Let's see if there's one more thing before we go. Why are there so many wanting my attention? Miss Tenuvial. Okay. Wow. The thing that always sort of comes to me when I look at a question like this is like, if you didn't have a body and 98, 99.999% of the world refused to acknowledge you exist, but you did exist, don't you think that if you discovered one or two people that had an ability to hear you but couldn't necessarily hear you yet, that you would like bang on their head until they did? Like I put myself in the position of somebody without a body going, man, if I didn't have a body and I needed to talk to somebody or I needed something, but I didn't know what it was, I would go searching for the one or two people that were actually willing to be aware, even if they didn't know they were aware. And I would just hammer them until they fucking paid attention to me. Cause what else are you going to do? And that's what's going, that's what was before this universe of talk to the entities came into existence. You had a whole universe of unseen beings who had very few people willing to actually handle them or, or assist. And what we do when you clear an entity is you facilitate them out of a trapped moment in time. It's a facilitation. How many people in the world are doing that? Well, more and more now, but in the beginning, not that many. So it was like, you know, there were still all these beings that needed assistance, but not very many people paying attention to them. So now that we're growing in numbers, it's changing, but it's like, why are there so many wanting your attention? You're aware and you have an ability. If you've got entities knocking on your head, you have an ability. And if you have, but you have, if you haven't claimed it and you haven't exercised it and you haven't developed it and practiced it, then you're the one that's suffering because they know you have an ability. It's just, you're the one that's been, you know, unconscious all this time. So my question for you is like, what would it take to be willing to include them in your world? What would that be like? Would your world change? Would it get richer, more nourished? Um, would everything get harder or easier? And, you know, it's like how whose lie of harder have you used to keep from handling 
and being with the ability that you naturally have with entities. It won't go away. You have to explore it. And if you explore it, would it give you more of you? If you'd like more, go to accessconsciousness.com slash crystal Crawford or talk to the entities.com and find a class. Uh, mine starts on Friday. And otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Bye.